Welcome back to the Well After Hours. I'm so glad to have you join us again today because today is a very special day. It's going to be a phenomenal day because of my phenomenal guest that I have. The youngest person I've ever had on the show today. And I want to introduce to the viewers my special guest, young master David Peaton, also known as King David. <laughs> Welcome to the well, David. Thank you for being with me today. <laughs> I'm so happy to have him here. And uh, David is a young entrepreneur. And I've had a series on, I've started a series uh, on, it was first, Women Fueled by Faith and Operating in Excellence. But I've also including men now uh, who are men who are fueled by their faith and operating in excellence. And it is amazing that this young 16 year old high school student has a business that you're gonna hear about and he is operating in excellence and has been for a while. So David, before we get started with some of your questions, I wanna read a little bit of your bio to the viewers. In case you missed in the, in the opening, his bio introduction. I want to read some things for you. Okay. Uh, let me put my glasses on here. David L. Peaton. He was born August the 8th, 2004 to Regina Peaton and Lionel Peaton. He is 16 years old and he was a premature born six months uh, and weighed two pounds and five ounces. And even though he came early, he was right on time. He is known as King David the Warrior and Miracle Baby. David is a graphic designer of King David the Warrior Designs and photographer of King David the Warrior Photography. David started his business in December of 2018, but was creating designs long before then. And he's currently a junior and attends the Jackson Memorial High School. He attends Greater Emmanuel Temple, where Pastor Gwendolyn Priester is the pastor. David is very active in his church. He helps with the sound engineering. He's the photographer at the church. He's a junior deacon, and he manages the church website. He also minds in the Chosen Generation Mind Ministry. He manages the church Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube pages, and manages the church's live stream. David is also the media coordinator for the Eagle Excellence Awards and helps with graphic design and also helps manage the Eagle Excellence Award pages. And one of David's goals is to attend college and major in graphic designing and engineering. And David loves to help others and tries to do it the best way that he can. Well, I'll tell you, you're going to get to see some of uh, David's work. And we're going to highlight some things that he's done when we take a break uh, in the middle of our uh, conversation. So, David, you know, one of the things that people probably <laughs> will want to understand is like, how did you take what we would call a hobby, or it may have been a hobby first starting out, and mm -hmm. transition that into a business? So um, I always loved creating uh, flyers and graphics. So um, I will always create. So say if someone was having a service and they already had a flyer, I will remake it and then send it to them just for fun, just to see what they said. And it was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. So as those um, requests kept coming in, I just started to uh, set up an Insta Instagram page and a Facebook page and uh, name it King David the Warrior Designs. Wow, I tell you. So when you were real little, did, did your parents recognize like your artistic ability? Like like we would buy crayons for our kids and give them paper and they scribble and stuff, but yours must have looked amazing. <laughs> um, actually, it was like scribble scrabble. So it kind of just developed over time. So as you got older, would you just like look at things and begin to try to draw them, you know? Yes. And, yeah. Uh, go ahead. I, um, say if I would see something, I would like to um, create it on a computer or like graphic. And then that helped also a lot because uh, in high school, I had classes that pertain to graphic design, which also helped. 
So when you were in junior high school, though, like when did you really recognize, wow, I really can draw? <laughs> um, At well, what age? Uh, like, you know, I would say maybe two years ago when I was uh, 13, 14 years old, I have recognized it. Wow. And, and, and you and you just could draw just about anything, just draw things and, and create. Yeah. And I mean, it's one thing to be able to draw. But to be able to design like a flyer, because those flyers are so mm -hmm. elaborate and I've seen your work. And I mean, I, I kind of saw it, you know, like in passing, not in some of the flyers. I didn't even realize you had done them, to be honest. I, I just thought they had, you know, commissioned some business outside <laughs> to do the flyers. And when I found out it was you, I was like, are you kidding me <laughs> at this young age? It's amazing. Yes. It is really amazing. And. So, and, and, and when did you kind of officially turn it into a business? It became like a business for you. I guess uh, everybody was asking. On, um, December of 2018, I, um, I'm sorry, could you say that again, honey? Your screen froze for a I, second. I uh, started my Instagram. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, on uh, December of 2018, I um, started my Instagram and Facebook page, and that's when I had a. Oh, wow. It, it, it kind of chopped off. He said he started an Instagram page, and because it cut out, it said unstable or something. I, we're having a little uh, technical issue uh, in, intermittently, but we're going to move on. But, um, and so. Um, having done that, like, then you d decided you needed a name, you needed to name your business? Yeah. Well, tell us how you came up with that wonderful name, <laughs> King David. So uh, when I was, when I was born prematurely, my uh, parents always called me King David the Warrior because um, I was born three months early. This way, uh, uh, by that way, I was um, early to the world. So they always said I was fighting for my life when I was in, uh, in the hospital for quite months. So that's where the name had came from, King David the Warrior Designs. Wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. So how does it feel to you now? Does it feel like a business or does it still feel like you're just, you know, like um, in a hobby state, a hobby mode? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's like a hobby mode, but I treat it like a business. That's pretty smart. So that's why you you enjoy it so passionately. What do you yeah. like about it the most? Uh, what I actually like about the most is I love to help other people out. So if people are in need of graphics, I just always love to help out and that um, and I'm able to do it. So do they let you use your own creative mind in that? Or do they say, oh, I want this, I want that? Or do they just say, you know what, David, you know, give, show me what you got. <laughs> uh, they usually say, show me what you have, and then I'll send it. And then sometimes they'll send like guidelines of what they want, and then I'll follow the guidelines with my creativity. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, um, that is, that how I have worked with people who are, much older than you are. And I see sometimes the things they grapple with, but you being so young, it's like you don't have um, any limitations. Like you're so free, you know, to just be creative <laughs> and do so many of the things that you do that um, in school, like you might, are you kind of ahead of the curve in school when it comes to like graphics? Like you see artwork, like, you know, people take art in school i mean how much have they really taught you i mean did you find out that you knew some of those things already yes I knew some of the things are ready but i still was able to learn more things to help me out and because i it has changed so much obviously since i was in school <laughs> in, in junior high school or high school but uh the teachers now do they use technology to teach you what do they use in school to teach students art now in school, we, uh, they use um, technology and they also use uh, pen and pencil, but most of it is on the computer because there's different programs that help you to develop what you have to do. Wow. 
And which program do you find uh, the most fun? For I find um, Adobe Photoshop the most fun and uh, Adobe Illustrator. Those are some of the tough ones. <laughs> Those are pretty difficult. I've tried. <laughs> tried to learn some of those but uh, it's still working and um so are you is it kind of like I know you're very active like in the church doing everything you're really the media uh, <laughs> the the social media director uh in the church and and doing live stream and all that I mean is that something you toyed around with or was that also taught kind of like uh, in high school did you learn that in high school uh it's something I just picked up and I just like kind of knew what to do already. So I just looked to like other churches and uh, see what they was doing. And I got help with other people from church to help me out. Mm. So, you know, in this pandemic, um, you know, there are a lot of young people who have struggled through the pandemic because, you know, um, being not being able to be a social, you know, going outside and, um, had maybe having to stay in close quarters, it has affected them. How has that affected you? Uh, it has affected me in uh, some way. Like, um, like I, I like to care for people. So like when I see other people struggle, it like, it affects me because then I want to have to do something to help them. But how have you, uh, what have you done to kind of help yourself get through this because you seem to be faring pretty well, you know. Um, well, I stayed in church uh, and uh, read read the Bible to keep me uh, sane and uh, just look, look looking to help others. That is so, that's so wonderful. And, um, and plus, I guess you probably had a lot to occupy your time <laughs> because yeah, I mean, people were still calling you through the pandemic to get things done, right? Yeah. And, and what kind of things like would they call up and say, uh, especially the church media, I guess there were people who didn't even know how to even do any things that weren't technically, how did you help them out? So uh, some people, they requested like flyers or like live stream help. So um, they were asked for like graphics that they want me to uh, create for their live stream. And then other people needed like countdowns for their intro of their live stream. So I would create the countdown and send it to them. And uh, some people needed like live stream help, like how to start live stream. So I would give them the resources and then they was able to follow and set their live stream up. Wow, that is awesome. So can you explain uh, for some of the viewers what that countdown is? So you can do a separate countdown mm -hmm. for the mid. Explain that because I don't even understand all that. <laughs> so uh, a countdown, maybe you say if you start church at 12 noon, you can start the countdown at 11.55. And then during that countdown, you could show announcements or you could show important information that they would need to know either for the service or the church itself. So it gives you time to get ready for service and also for the viewers to learn more about your church. Wow. That is amazing. That, <laughs> you, you're educating us here <laughs> on how to do all these things. And um, so is there anything, do you have to have a specific program to be able to do that? Um, I use like uh, Adobe Photoshop to create the actual graphic, but to get the video, I use something called Shotcut and it allows me to put the image up, but include the countdown, like the actual numbers to place on top of the graphic. So this way it'll play like a motion graphic. Mm -hmm. So does that require me to have something special? Like say if I said, oh, David, I, would, I, need, I need something. I would like to have something like that to open up. What would I, what kind of program would I have to have? The same thing or? Uh, the same thing you create it. But if you have your own program for live streaming, you mm -hmm. would just include it in your program and then it uh, uh, upload and then you can go right into service. Wow. So having live stream doesn't mean that the church has to have a lot of uh, tools. Like do they have to have cameras and all that to do that? Um, yes, they, they can do. either use um, an actual camera, like professional camera or a camcorder, 
or they could use their cell phone as a camera for oh. live stream. And then the, um, the app for live streaming with a phone, you could either use StreamYard or Switcher, which is specifically for iPhones. Mm -hmm. But StreamYard is for both Android and iPhone. And it allows you to use your, um, your camera, your cell phone as a camera, and you can get different angles during your live stream. Wow, that's something. You know, and you're also, you have now, and the thing, you have two productions. <laughs> You have, uh, what is it, the, the print and you have photography. Yeah. How, how, now, that's one thing, being creative uh, with drawing and things like that. But now you're, your photography is amazing as well. I've seen those pictures and viewers, you're going to see, we're going to take a break in a minute so you can see some of them. But how did you get into the photography end of it? Um, uh, December of 2019 for Christmas, my parents had bought me uh, a camera. So ever since then, I always wanted to do photography. So I would just take pictures of simple things like uh, like bowls and chairs and like nature. And like uh, anything that I would see, I would just take a picture of it to gain practice for a more professional uh, look for pictures. And that developed kind of like, but taking pictures of people, when did you realize that you actually could turn that into a business? Because it's like you have two separate businesses now. You know, you're a photographer and you have that uh, print and graphic. Yeah. So, um, like, uh, with the church, uh, I had the camera. So I, will, uh, I started taking pictures of the people in church, like in action. So since then, that helped me to develop a photography business to take mm -hmm. pictures of people and nature. Wow. Uh, so wait, and now you both, now in the midst of all this too, you've been online with school as well, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Tell us about that. I don't know. You are managing things really well because you're online with school and yet you're operating your business. How is that working out? So uh, during school hours, I focus on school, which would run like, basically my whole morning and a little bit into my afternoon. And then when the afternoon would start, I would um, either focus on the church's needs or my business needs. And then that would most likely be after school. And then on like the weekends, I uh, put my focus more towards the church, which may be uh, managing our church pages or uh, getting ready for live stream and uploading the graphics that we need for the live stream on Sunday. Wow. And because you have, you know, just because you're online with school doesn't mean they don't give you work to do. So it's like, that's a time management issue. Like, <laughs> maybe you can teach us something about how to manage the time because you're doing the work. How do you, you know, assemble all that together? Like a certain amount of time you allow for something or what? So, um, I allow a certain amount of time for school and then me uh, for homework, I allow a time for that. And then once I'm done with my homework, I have the rest of the time to either focus on church or photography or graphic design. So I just kind of multitask throughout my day to get everything situated for the, for the whole day. Wow. Well, viewers, we're going to take a break right now. So don't go away. Stay and watch. I'm going to give you some clips of uh, some of David's work. And we'll be right back. Don't go away.
Well, I know you just enjoyed that wonderful presentation of David's work. And yes, it's hard to believe that he is only 16 years old and in high school, <laughs> that all that he does. But there's a part of, uh, of David that I want to talk about. David, I would like for you to talk about, you know, growing up, I know that your parents are in ministry, you know, your grandparents are in ministry, and I'm sure that has helped you know, a lot uh, to, as I say, fuel your faith. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit about, you know, what part that your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ has played in your life. So uh, being in church has uh, always kept me uh, together, to say, in a way, uh, for the whole week and to focus my life to God. So with my business, I... Um, I love doing church flyers because it uh, resembles God and uh, churches. So being uh, my face, it allows me to, um, to stay in tune with God by reading, my, uh, by reading the word of God and by praying throughout the week. And then when it comes for my business, I love to pray over it. This way, my graphics can resemble uh, God in some type of way. That is so awesome. And, you know, I had done a, um, another conversation on the show uh, about young people and about the hard times that they were going to how to prevent, you know, um, suicide. It was Suicide Awareness Month for youth, you know, and um, it, the statistics actually um, reported that those who were involved spiritually, you know, in their beliefs and their faith, fared much better than those who didn't. And I'm sure, you know, having uh, a higher person, a higher being to look to, you know, in your life to know that even what you see down here is not totally dependent on who you see down here, but on who you believe in. And I'm sure that has really helped uh, tremendously to um, fuel your faith. And I, and I was happy to hear that too, uh, because it gives us more hope. And we want the best for our young people, just as your parents, you know, want the best for you. And you have other siblings, or are they, how are they? Are they, anybody else in your family that's talented like that in an artistic way? Or what does everybody else kind of like have their own thing? What do they like to do? Um, well, my sister, she's into um, mime and uh, dance and singing. So she also mimes on the mime team. And she's in, also in the dance team for our church. And then my, uh, my brother, that was, that was for Alexis. And my brother, Jonathan, he's into uh, drums and drumming. And uh, Brandon is into uh, playing the saxophone. Into, he's also into musical, um, that musical area. And that's uh, pretty much it. Wow. That is amazing. And how many brothers, since you have one sister, and how many brothers? I have two brothers. Two brothers. Okay. So there's three boys and one girl. That is awesome. Uh, you have awesome parents too, which is, <laughs> which is a blessing as well. But um, it, it, it just seems um, so uh, enlightening to be able to kind of highlight like what you do and what you have done. Where do you see uh, you know, you're a junior in high school, you'll be a senior eventually in graduating, you want to go to college, but you're still be going to be, you know, because of technology, you can take your business <laughs> with you anywhere you go. That's what's great too. You know, even when you're in college, um, sometimes college students are looking for jobs. You know, mm -hmm. you won't have to do that because people are going to be looking for you. <laughs> and following you um, about that. Where do you see taking your business, like in the, you know, in, in the world, the way it is now, you know, what do you see for yourself? Um, I see myself moving more into a professional state, like with graphic design and photography, and uh, to develop more skills within my area to perfect my business. Um, I also see, like, uh, with the photography to maybe do, like, videography, well, like maybe like small videos and like intros and outros, either for myself or other people that may need it. Wow. Who knows? You could be doing things for the school you're attending to, too, having so many talents and gifts like that. That is amazing. And um, what would you say to some other young people 
who your age who are in school like some advice or some encouragement for them um i would say if, like if you're creative to always like know what your niche is and what makes you um like enjoy yourself more and what you love to do to always follow it and uh to follow your dreams and know that nothing stop you because it, it allows you to know yourself better. And in this way, you'd be more happy and you'd be more um, developed with yourself to, uh, to go through life. That is awesome. That is really awesome. And it's so good, you know, it, young people can encourage young people, you know, because there's a better understanding seemingly between the two because you both know, and I'm sure you've seen maybe some of your friends you know, uh, as you encourage people in the church or before we were closed off in a pandemic, you were in closer contact with friends in school. And I'm sure you see some young people who have had bad days, you know, and has had good days as well as we all do. But, you know, it depends so much on uh, where you get your source of encouragement. And um, so it, it's so good to hear you say that. And um those are, are, are great remarks that uh, you can give. Is there anything else that you would speak to, say, like persons in church, like myself, adults, pastors, and things like that, who are maybe looking or struggling, trying to figure out how they can make, and they are, this is happening, how they can maintain um, their church uh, groups or, you know, the contact with their members, you know, and they don't know, everybody's not, blessed or skilled to go online. Um, what would you say to the pastors who are looking or, or fighting, trying to figure out how do I hold my church together since I can't be there physically? How can I do it with technology? Uh, so with technology, there's many programs out there that allow you to see your members uh, virtually if you're not in the building or you, from your, the comfort of your own home. For instance, uh, Zoom, it allows you to uh, a video conference anyone in your meeting so this way they could see you and you could see them in real time and there's um other programs like the conference line where it's not video but it's audio so they can still hear hear you and you can hear everyone else that's on the line and um if you're in church and you would like to um go virtually for live stream you could use zoom with a video source, which your computer or a camera, or you could use another app uh, like StreamYard with your phone and still incorporate that with YouTube Live and Facebook Live. So this way they can see you virtually. Wow, that is such good information because you, you even show that, listen, even if you don't have the finance up front right away, you can use your phone, you know, so it's, there's kind of no excuse, right? I mean, you know, everybody's got a phone. <laughs> Even if you're still in the flip phone stage, you still, if you have a phone, you can live stream uh, your program, your services and things. And that is really great to know. And I, it's just been so great to have you on today to share with us uh, all about King David Productions. And I'm gonna keep an eye on it. This is the first time, but this is not gonna be the last time. I may have to Zoom you from uh, from college when you're off to keep up with business. But uh, I'm so grateful that you will be able to be here and share and viewers for you. We're gonna have all of David's contact information so that if you would like to contact him because he does have an up and running business. This is. It's not a side anymore. It's not sideline, you know, or a hobby. He has an actual up and running business. And we're going to give you all of his information that he will share that you might even contact him and see that, oh, all that he has to do. So, David, again, I want to thank you for being with us today. Thank you for taking the time and being encouraging and inspiring to so many. And so viewers, listen. You never know what we're going to show you on the well. So we'll be looking for you every Thursday, 7.30 p.m., Facebook page, Beverly D. Allen, and on YouTube channel, Beverly D. Allen Ministries, LLC. And we're going to put up David's information where you can actually see all that he has done. And it'll be such a blessing to you. Make sure you reach out and, and uh, check out what he has. And so, listen, we'll be looking for you again. And until then, next week, God bless you. Bye.
Thank you again, David. Thank you.